Good morning, church. Welcome to the first day of Advent as we look to Christ's coming as a baby into our world, our Savior, our Messiah, to come in as a human like we are. And um, I just want to welcome you for that today as we look for that. And so uh, for those of you who are here for the first time, I just want to give you a really warm welcome. We're so glad you're here. We'd love to have a record of your visit, and so there's a yellow card in the pew. If you wouldn't mind filling that out and dropping it in the offering plate, we would love to have that. Um, and also, just for those of you um, who maybe have been reaching out to some of our shut-ins, we'd love to have a record of that as well in that uh, salmon color card that's in the pew. If you could fill that out, if you've reached out to them, we would appreciate that as well. Um, not too many announcements today. The biggest one, uh, most important right now, is for you to know that we are having our community care ministries today after church. Uh, we will be having a luncheon, and then we will be going from there to the different nursing homes to visit uh, the um, patients there. And so if you want to be a part of that and you haven't um, RSVP'd, that's okay. We'd love to have you. Please come. Um, and for those of you who already signed up, uh, that's the plan. So join us for lunch, and we'll go from there. And then just before we go um, into a moment of prayer, I just want to encourage everyone here, since today is the first day of Advent, uh, just to remind you to prepare your hearts and be intentional in that this Advent season. And um, one way you can do that that's really simple, that doesn't require the purchase of a book or a Bible study, is just to read the book of Luke, which has 24 chapters, and you can read that a chapter every day and prepare your heart for Jesus coming on Christmas Day as we celebrate this Advent season. So just an encouragement there. Um, and one thing that I did forget as well is um, if you look at the, um, all the upcoming events in your bulletin, there are a lot that have little red next to them that says, please RSVP. So take a look at that list, and we need you to RSVP for those things that you're going to be involved in or attending. We do need that information. So as we begin our worship, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we are so thankful that you came. Um, into our world, that you came to save us, that um, we can take this time um, to look for you, to remember that you did that for us. So Father God, turn our hearts to you this Advent season and today especially. As we worship you, we just pray, Father God, that everything that we do or say here would be acceptable to you and you would find as worship and glorifying you. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Today is the first Sunday of Advent. Advent means coming or arrival, and in this season we prepare for the coming of Christ. It is a time not only for remembering the coming of Christ in Bethlehem, but also for seeking to recognize him when he comes to us now. Jesus lives in our own times and in our own lives, yet too often he is a stranger to us and we fail to recognize him. We are not prepared. By lighting one candle each week of Advent, we help ourselves get ready for the birth of Jesus. The candles have different meanings, each based upon the Bible. These meanings help us understand how special the birth of Jesus is for us. Today, we focus on the gift of hope. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fill the good promise I made to the people of Israel and Judah. In those days, and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. He will do what, he just, what is just and right in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called the Lord, our righteous Savior. Jeremiah 33, 14 through 16. At Advent, we are invited to immerse ourselves in hope. Biblical hope is not wishful thinking. It is the unshakable confidence that God can be trusted. It is the belief that God is always at work for our good. It is the assurance that God's promises are true, even while we wait for their fulfillment. Because our hope is certain, we wait patiently, not fretfully, 
trusting that God is already at work to provide the light we seek, the help we need, and the deliverance we long for. God of hope, make us ready for this Advent. Prepare us the way of the Lord. We are listening to your word as you announce the arrival of our Savior, who is Jesus, the King of Kings. Amen. Um, I'd invite you to stand. Um, we're going to sing. We have about four weeks to get in all of our Christmas carols. So um, we'll be in that section of the songbook. Um, today's song is a little tricky. Uh, if you look in the songbook, there's a chorus. We're not singing the chorus. Um, and we have four verses, but like two of our verses fit into one of theirs. So just follow me and we'll try and make this work. Um, if not, they might not let me lead a song again. So who knows? Uh, but let's, let's sing together. As the ushers come forward, uh, we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we just thank you for today. We thank you for your goodness and the riches that you provide us. We now offer back some of those riches to you so that you would use them to multiply the goodness and work of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Good morning. Um, I'm going to read scripture today. So if you'll turn with me um, to Matthew 1. Um, and we're going to read uh, verses 18 through 23. <clears throat> this is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. <clears throat> but after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. And we are going to sing um, song 118, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Um, so if you guys want to stand with me. What? Oh, yeah, all four verses. invite the band to come down and um, as they're coming down we'll get ready for a time of prayer 
And I don't know about the rest of you, but it's been a week. <laughs> You're like, yeah, it has been a week. There are seven days, 24 hours in a day. Yeah, it's been a week. Um, a great week of loss and heartache. Um, and I don't know what it is about Thanksgiving starting a week later, but I feel really thrown off. I don't know about anybody else. Um, it doesn't quite feel like Christmas yet, so I'm thrilled today to start this season of Advent with all of you. And we wanna take some time together and pray just to get our hearts and our minds in line with this season of anticipation. These next uh, 24 days, there's so many traditions and wonderful things that happen, but really to take a time to focus on the Lord. And part of that, our relationship with Christ has a natural effect to those around us, and we want to see how we can pray for one another. If you look at the bulletin, you'll see prayer requests listed there. But of course, there are many needs not even listed. Heartaches, dreams, plans that maybe aren't quite going how uh, they were anticipated to go. So this morning, as we take time to worship, to spend time in the word, let's pray for one another. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we love you, and this morning we give you praise, for you are the God of hope, and you give us joy. And as we enter the season of Advent, I pray that we would be filled with anticipation. Lord, I pray that you would bind anxiety away, and that it would be filled with anticipation of you, Lord. I pray that you would bind fear away, and that it would be filled with hope in our hearts. Heavenly Father, for our brothers and sisters who are grieving today, we pray that your Holy Spirit would give comfort and peace, which only you can do. Heavenly Father, we pray for our brothers and sisters who are waiting today, that your comfort and peace would be with them. Heavenly Father, we love you and we trust you, and in all things, we pray that your will would be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, so I'll invite the junior soldiers to head out the back. And everyone else can open your Bibles to Matthew chapter one. Maybe it's because it's overcast today too. I don't know what it is, friends. But here we are in December. And I do think we should start some kind of poll or movement to uh, bring Christmas carols to the whole year round. Raise your hand if you want Christmas music all year round. I see a couple double hands, but you're in the minority, people, sorry. <laughs> They're like, today's the day you can start. You can't have it all those other days. Well, as you're opening your Bible to Matthew 1, and as we prepare our hearts to really focus on these portions of scripture that we come to every year in this season, this tradition of the Christmas holidays. Um, Advent really is this beautiful paradox of remembering what's happened and anticipating what is to come. And over the next five weeks, we're gonna be reminded and encouraged to remember that all of this we do because of Bethlehem because of what happened in that small city thousands of years ago, because there were people who were obedient, we can be people who, who have hope, who praise, people who live in wisdom. Because of people like you and me knowing the gospel, we can be people who live and love the gospel in all that we do. So today we're gonna rest on this concept of hope. Now, I'm wondering if any of you have ever tried to do something that doesn't go quite how you think it's supposed to go. Maybe you have some plans in your mind or an idea about a Thanksgiving meal on the table at a certain point in day. Did it, who made their meal on time? Okay, we got a few. Oh, that's only a few. <laughs> um, well, I want to tell you about, uh, it's probably been five or six years since I've hosted my immediate family at my house for Christmas. And I had this grand idea of having a family talent show. 
I got a whole brood of nieces and nephews. I'm like, this evening we're packing away the screens and we're gonna do a family talent show. I mean, actual talent or not. I, I wanted everyone to participate. I just was so pumped up about this. And nobody else really was. But it was my house, so I made him do it. It involves some moody teenagers, a few indifferent parents. And I want to tell you, it, it started, and it was just, there was so much angst in the room because people didn't want to do it. And it was just bad. <laughs> my plan was not going, you know, I'm thinking this is going to be a wonderful thing. But something happened. Uh, Uncle Peter, you know him as Captain Peter, um, he saved the day. And he performed an absolutely hilarious interpretive dance to a Christmas favorite. I'll leave that out there for you to guess which one. And the hilarity of the moment just saved the day. And then everyone else got into it. My mom read a poem, somebody else played the piano, a kid pulled out a cornet. I mean, my plan was not going as I intended. But due to my dear husband putting his dignity aside, <laughs> he saved the day. And, and every once in a while, we're able to pull together a family talent show again. And now there's always on the agenda an interpretive dance by Uncle Peter. You guys should uh, start a petition. <laughs> Trust me, you want to be spared. But our plans don't go as we always plan. Maybe uh, you've had some holiday fails in your own experience, uh, perhaps in the kitchen. I don't know if you've ever seen these sort of things. <laughs> Pinterest is a liar, <laughs> really. So you might find this, oh, I can recreate that. I know Amy Sofran could recreate that. This is what would happen, the scary demon cupcake. Or maybe something like this. Oh. <laughs> These cute melty snowmen turned out to have a horrible death in the next slide. So, I mean, sometimes things just don't go as you plan. And often, you know, there are different ways, scenarios and situations can work out. But when we look at our scripture today and you consider what's happening in the life of Mary and Joseph, this is a prime of example of plans not going the way they thought they would go. So look in Matthew chapter one, and let's review 18 and 20 again. It says this. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. Keep in mind, in this tradition, before actual marriage, you were betrothed, and it was a binding legal agreement. And so when it mentions divorce, even though they weren't legally bound by marriage, by the, the sacrament of marriage, they were bound by this betrothal. And, and Joseph, being committed to the law, knew that this situation was not what he had planned or what would be perceived as acceptable. Mary carrying a baby in her womb that was given to her by the Holy Spirit was not in Mary and Joseph's engagement and wedding plans. Beginning their life together with, with scandal and questions and uncertainty was not in their plans. I mean, think about this. Before Mary was approached by the Holy Spirit, she most likely was dreaming about starting her own home with her fiance. She was probably dreaming about what kind of wife and mother she would be. Maybe even considering the freedom she would have outside of her parents' home as she started a new home with Joseph. Maybe what kind of meals she would prepare for her family. She had her entire future ahead of her and her hope was most likely focused on really those temporal responsibilities and realities in the world around her. How am I gonna do this? What's this gonna be like? Will I still see my family often? That kind of daydreaming that a young girl might do. And I'm sure Mary had a plan. 
And I'm sure that being a mother of the Son of God was not anywhere on her radar for her future. And I'm guessing Joseph wasn't much different. I'm sure he had plans and dreams and goals for his future family. And having a a fiance pregnant by someone else was not in the plan. In fact, we know that in response to this supernatural situation, Joseph did what he thought was the logical response. He started adapting their plans to what seemed the most logical next step. So look at verse 19, it says this, because Joseph was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, although think about that, even silently divorcing her would still be obvious when she was having a giant belly a few months later. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. Joseph was making plans to take care of the situation to protect himself. But here's the truth we learn in these next few verses. Any plans made outside of God's will are flawed plans. Listen to that, any plans, this is including for you and me, made outside of the will of God are flawed plans. And God recognized what was happening with Joseph. He recognized Joseph's flawed thinking. Uh, he, recognize, he recognizes our own flawed thinking. And what does God do here? He intervenes by sending a message to Joseph. So look at verses 20 through 22. It says, but after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. Listen to that, do not be afraid. What was motivating Joseph? Fear. Do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son. You are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Joseph's plan was rejected by God, and what did God do? He revealed the big picture to Joseph. He said, let me show you what you're supposed to do. You know, personally, I've always been a planner. Some of you might be more planners than others, but I love a good table chart and checklist. There's something satisfying just about marking marking it off. Some of you are nodding your heads and some of you are like, what? Let's just go do something. (laughs) But here's the deal. Plans don't always work out in real life like they do on paper. They absolutely don't. You can have the best laid plans and intentions, but life happens. And Joseph's mind here Well, I'm sure his mind was blown. God dramatically informs him that there is another way. There's a God way to follow. There's a God way to pursue. I think God's trying to tell us something. (laughs) And this is what it is. He has a way for each of us to follow a plan with a greater purpose, a plan that was ordained for the whole world, a plan that would change everything. Look at verse 22. It says, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Please say God with us. This is the plan. Jesus is the redemption plan to reunite humanity with the creator. We know God created the world. God created mankind in his image. All mankind was separated from God because of sin. And this plan, this Matthew chapter one happening, this Jesus coming to the world as a baby, 
of living a, a sinless life, of, of fulfilling hundreds of years of prophecy, of being handed over and killed and crucified and being raised again. This Jesus who was born to the parents Mary and Joseph. He was, he was, he is, he will always be the Son of God. And the plan is that he would come to earth to be like you and me. That's quite a plan. Weaved together by the master, the creator of the universe. That there would be redemption. It's extravagant. And maybe even odd, yet a compelling plan for redemption of the world. God with us. Friends, you can follow the path of Joseph before the angels visit. You can try and mark out everything you want and do what you think is right and use your own reason and logic to plan out and to respond to what's happening around, around you. But listen to me. Any plan outside of the will of God is a flawed plan. You know, it's funny, that word plan. It, it's also used in architecture and building things, and I think of a roller coaster. They follow a plan, a drawing, electrical grids, engineering schematics. Would you want a flawed schematic to build the roller coaster that you and your family are riding on next week? No. Any plan outside of the will of God is flawed. The whole reason we tell this story, these Christmas stories, year after year. The whole reason we set up nativities and create a holiday full of activities and events is to remember the plan. Not your own way, but God's way. He is with us. God is with us because of Bethlehem. Because Mary and Joseph submitted to the will of the Father, because Jesus was a sinless man, because he came back to life and he ascended to heaven, he continues to be an active God who is with us. Thank you, Jesus, that there is a plan because Lord, help us if we are depending on the world to fix or solve anything. Our hope is in that God is with us. And here's the deal with God is with us. That's either gonna have two effects on you. It's gonna affect you in one of two ways. You're either gonna feel comfort or you're gonna feel fear. See, when a believer rests in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, they trust in God's plan, even when they don't know what it is, even when they're confused, even when they're angry, even when they don't like it, you can still experience comfort and peace when you're walking in the will of the Father. When a believer is filled with the Holy Spirit, they're reminded that Jesus never leaves us. We have his word for comfort. We have his spirit for peace. And knowing that Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us, we're encouraged to trust and have faith regardless of our circumstance. And we look for ways to walk in God's will. But there's another response to knowing, to acknowledging that God is with us. Some people acknowledge that God is with us and they're filled with fear. Think about this, it's being filled with a conviction that they're following their own plans and not the Lord's. They're filled with fear because they don't hope in, etern in an eternal God. They hope in a world that will continually disappoint and not satisfy. 
And all of a sudden their decisions and their choices are laid bare to God who's been there the whole time. God is with us, gives me comfort. But if you're not walking in the will of God, God with you is terrifying. But the truth is, whether you acknowledge him or not, he is there. He is with us. He came through his son and he remains in the world through his Holy Spirit. And when you're walking in your own will, in your own plan, instead of expecting a gracious, comforting God, a person's pride and contempt interprets a God that is with us to be full of judgment and condemnation. And that is not the God we serve. But when we're walking in our own human nature and our our own stubbornness of doing it our way, all of a sudden we start giving attributes to God because he's not doing our will. And that's not how we were created. When does the created get to tell the creator what to do? If any one of us is feeling that, that God's presence is, is judging our behavior or choices in, in a perceived negative way, Friends, that is called conviction. That's the Holy Spirit saying, okay, Catherine, that's your will trying to take over the driver's seat again. God sent his son in a tangible, miraculous way to give us clear, an absolutely clear sign that he is with us and he wants to be reunited. Friends, conviction is a sign that the Holy Spirit is working on your heart to get you back to God's plan. And that plan is a future with him, one that offers hope. One that offers hope when you feel like you are drowning in grief. One that offers hope when you feel like the loneliest person in the world, one that offers hope when you are deep in despair or surrounded by confusion. Relief comes in the plan of God. Relief comes when we follow the will of the Father. Is there still pain? Is there still despair? Is there still heartache? Do bad things still happen? Yes, but will you feel comfort? Will you find peace? Will you find hope? Yes. And you better believe that Joseph was confused and hurt and embarrassed and probably angry when Mary told him she was pregnant. But God... Friends, but God drew near and he gave Joseph clarity. He replaced his confusion with clarity and hope and purpose. And what did Joseph do? Look at verse 24. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and he took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus. Joseph was obedient. He didn't simply do the next right thing. He did the God thing. He set aside his flawed plan and he responded to the creator of the world by being obedient to the Father's will. I wouldn't be surprised if Joseph still had a lot of questions and maybe even doubts. But he recognized that God's way is better than his own. This Christmas season, I'm wondering how you will respond to the promise 
to the reality that God is with us. Maybe you just needed to be reminded this morning that you're not alone. Perhaps you don't need to remember the birth of Jesus, but you wanna, you wanna hear the words from Matthew 28, 20 when Jesus says, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Friends, God is with us. That is and should be a comfort in every single day. And today, if you hear this message and your response is not comfort, but it's conviction, then receive the challenge. God's plan is better. Even the parts we don't understand, his way is best. You know, I don't really like waiting. Most, most of us probably don't like waiting. Whether it's in traffic or a grocery line or waiting for your kids to put their shoes on or whatever it is. It's the waiting when you have a plan and a schedule and you wanna to stick to it. Waiting isn't built into it. But something happens in that practice of waiting whether it's imposed or purposeful. You either develop patience and hope or you develop haste and despair. But here's what's interesting about waiting. When you're waiting for something or someone, you have no control over the situation. You just wait. And there are absolutely days when I am sick of waiting and I want Jesus to come back. <laughs> but we have a choice to respond with either haste and despair or patience and hope. And as we wait for Jesus to return, this is just, there was a first advent. This is the second advent. We are waiting for Jesus to come back, not as a baby, but as a conquering king. And as we wait, as we wait for God's plan to be revealed and expressed in the world around us, we are called to hope, not to despair. This season of Advent, yes, it is a waiting, but it's an anticipating for the miraculous that he will do because he has promised to do it. I wanna finish with you today in Psalm 130. And it's only eight verses, but as you read it, it might seem kind of like a downer. <laughs> but listen to these words, starting in verse one, Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits. And in this word I put my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than a watchman wait for the morning, more than a watchman wait for the morning. O Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. I want you to look at that verse seven and eight, and where it says Israel, I want you to put your own name. Oh, Catherine, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem you from all your sins. What a promise. Our waiting 
is not in vain because we hope in the Lord. We're gonna sing a chorus together and I'm gonna invite Rochelle to play it so we have the tune in our heads and it's simple and it says I'm in his hands. Whatever the future holds, I'm in his hands. The days I cannot see have all been planned for me. His way is best. You see, I'm in his hands. And my prayer for you this morning as we are in this season of Advent, as we take these next 24 days of busyness and fun and cookies and food and all of the good things, my invitation to you is to walk in God's will. If you are trying to own it all and be in control of all the things, your plan is flawed. But if you let the Holy Spirit guide you and you walk with the Lord in his will, you will have relief. The best place to be in the world is in the Father's hands. The altars are open if you would like to pray. But as we sing this a few times through and then take a time, maybe you just need to read Psalm 130 over again and wait in the promise of hope. Or maybe you need to respond to the conviction of the Holy Spirit to get on board with God's agenda. Don't miss this opportunity to trust the Father. Let's sing this. <clears throat> I'm in his hands. continues to play just go to the father and trust him ask for direction and clarity of the path to follow of the decisions you need to make of the choices for yourself for your family for your work for your life take it all to him the way is easier the way is blessed the ease is not in the circumstance, but it's in the comfort. And while we're on this earth, his will, his way is best. Let's pray together.
I shall not fear though darkened clouds may gather round me. The God I serve is one who cares and understands. Although the storms I face would threaten to confound me, of this I am assured I'm in his hands. What though I cannot know the way that lies before me, I still can trust and freely follow his commands. My faith is firm since he it is who watches o'er me. Of this I'm confident I'm in his hands. In days gone by, my Lord has always proved sufficient. When I have yielded to the law of love's demands, why should I doubt that he would ever more be present to make his will my own? I'm in his hands. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, and that is our testimony. I pray that my brothers and, and sisters would feel the conviction of your Holy Spirit. When we start to take life into our own hands, when we stop trusting you, I pray, Lord, that your spirit would convict. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters who truly need your comfort and peace today, who deeply need to know your presence, who deeply need to experience God with us. Oh, Lord, I pray that they would feel it and they would know it. For, Lord, we are a broken people. We need you. We plead for you. And we ask that your Holy Spirit would continue to work in us, to shape us, to be more like you. Heavenly Father, help us to focus on you this Advent season, to daily take even more time to know you and to make you known. Father, might that be in the very way that we live, the very way that we speak, the very way that we act. May it be filled with your spirit. We trust your way, Lord. In the powerful name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. I invite you to stand with me for our closing song. I forgot to mention, you'll notice Peter is not here today. He woke up not feeling well. And you should be really glad he's not here today. <laughs> so please keep in him in your prayers as he is recovering at home. We're gonna sing our final song together, O Come All Ye Faithful. That this would be our prayer, that we would join together and that we would be waiting with anticipation for our Lord. Let's sing together.
Amen. O oh, Israel, or this morning, O oh, Royal Oak Citadel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. What a promise that is ours. God bless you today.